I'm the national level resource person. I usually conduct the post trainings in different locations for different people. ICC, I have a long uh, relationship and uh, we have been together into a lot of seminar sessions and uh, industry platforms. And I thank Eileen and Shudaida for this opportunity where I can actually come and interact. So let me start by saying that uh, uh, there's nothing new to tell you that we are facing a serious crisis. Okay. But what I need to tell you is that uh, crisis or no crisis, we must find a way out of this trouble. And to do that, the only savior that we have now technically is science that we can see. But the problem is that the science that we have been so used to see is often very complicated. And today, this is a mass phenomenon which is happening. Uh, most of you who are in this forum, I can understand that uh, you are it's very well trained, you are very educated, but please understand, ultimately going back to the industry, the scenario is completely different. And there you'll have to deal with people who will be uh, literally not so educated or not so uh, well informed, I should say. In that case, the science that you put out to them cannot be complicated, it has to be simple, and it has to be put out in a very smart way, okay, so that uh, they can follow. But before I move into this, and that will be the theme of today's discussion, and apart from whatever I do, uh, I'm a little bit of an artist, so all my presentations are a bit of a, a bit of a you know drawing that I put out myself. After the session, uh, Irene will probably circulate the FSSI training material to all of you, and there are one or two materials very important that me and my team has developed. I'll share that uh, training material with all of you. That will be for your reference. But before that, we must understand uh, what is this problem about COVID-19. So here, you can see Mr. Donald Trump shouting that COVID-19 is real. And here there is a scientist at the bottom. And the scientist is saying that, you know what, Mr. President, the climate change is also real. Now, why did I put out this cartoon? It's because uh, there was a lot of denial. You know, uh, we have been living in a society which is constantly denying scientific facts. And most of the disaster movies that you see, uh, you know, in, in, uh, that the US makes, unfortunately, a little oxymoronic also, where you see that uh, there is a scientist who keeps on shouting and the government and the other people in power does not listen initially, unless it is actually very late. And this time also something like this happened. And uh, the world together, uh, fail to face the challenge in a more scientific way with a scientific approach. So in a world which is plagued with pseudo scientific approach, it is extremely difficult. Now here you see this is a very common scenario now of course the uh, tea shops have now been opened and so you can see a lot of people around the tea shops may not be gathering uh, like this but uh, again gradually as I could see people are, uh, are, are coming and talking because in Bengal, we Bengalis always have a habit of uh, what do you call is an atta. And you over here an atta, you get a lot of comments, like somebody saying, you know, go mutra pina and somebody saying, uh, rum is the only solution, alcohol is the only solution to the problem. Somebody is saying this is a bigger conspiracy of some country and some people, and uh, a lot of other, uh, other elements or other uh, things that they discuss, they are completely unscientific. And please understand, uh, this kind of a, a casual gathering gives you an idea of what is going in the mass. And this is the mass that all of you eventually will have to work with. So if the situation is that they are plagued with all these unscientific thoughts, it is going to be extremely difficult post the lockdown. Because if you look at the lockdown, already it has created a lot of trouble. You can see it has already created a lot of trouble for the self-employed. Uh, for the MSME startups, struggling companies, students, and uh, how this is going to uh, multiply in the coming times, this still remains a question. I'm a very optimistic person, I'm not an economist, and I always believe in humanity more than economy. So I believe that uh, we will definitely find a way to survive, but it is not going to be easy. The other major challenge as a scientist who's been working in the food safety domain, I can tell you, that most of the manufacturing companies, it's not their fault, mind you. Chances are, chances are that, uh, chances are that the first budget that they're going to curb upon is going to be the food safety budget. 
And if they do that, that is the, uh, that is the worst disaster that they're going to be. Because uh, if you talk about the economy, if you talk about the economy, as I said that uh, I'm not an economist, but the thing is, uh, if you see here, there's going to be some blames and counter blames yeah, as, to, as to who uh, killed or as to what led to the disaster or as to what led to the problem in the Indian economy. Uh, these debates will be there, but uh, if you go by the McKinsey report, the unfortunate scenario is even if the virus is contained, uh, even if the virus is contained in this country, uh, maybe in the coming uh, coming uh, two, three, four months, two to four months, uh, even then, even then, the graph uh, for the GDP is not uh, looking like growing up unless and unless it is almost quarter two or quarter three of uh, 2021. And this again definitely will be a very challenging period for the MSMEs, uh, not only in terms of uh, their uh, manufacturing processes, their cost, but also with respect to their labor and how they will be handling them. If I can quickly take you of what led to this problem, and if you think that uh, this is the end of it, there is no, there is not going to be any more COVID-19 in future. I'm sorry to say, uh, probably you are making a mistake. If you see this slide, uh, where I've drawn basically, uh, there is something called a carbon footprint. It's basically uh, the amount of consumption of different things, whether it is your clothes that you put on, the ACs that you use, the vehicles that you're using, you are basically taking out the carbon from soil. It's a different context altogether. I'll not get into the details. But just to tell you that there is a lot of carbon footprint which you are creating. And these greenhouse gases and this carbon, and, you, and, and in terms of your carbon uh, quantity that you are utilizing, India is basically world's number three. So we are not environmentally uh, very good when it comes to, uh, you know, the environmental, keeping uh, together the environmental stuff. Now, uh, in that scenario, in that scenario, to add, there is a serious challenge in India now. And that challenge starts with inequality. As I said, that I will not go into, get into the details of all this, because probably I can do one one session on each of this for five, six hours. So I'll just keep it short to tell you that in India, if you look at the scenario now, 73% uh, of the wealth is with uh, almost 1% of the population. And uh, in such a scenario, there are many power equations being created in India, which is leading to a lot of uh, malfunction in the political scenario of the country. And this is something which we all know. But then what has it to do with an infectious disease? Please understand that one of the fallouts of this uh, uh, distribution system that we have in India is the public distribution system is also hit. It is very corrupt. As a result of which, even after 80 years of independence, uh, we have not been able to put up a very strong public distribution system. In a country like India, it is not easy. It's very well understood. There are a lot of challenges, but I think we could have done better. Now, uh, what happens if the public distribution system is not good? Most of the people in India are malnutrition. When I say most of the people, I mean 190.7 million people in India are malnourished. And uh, for your information, 3,000 children every day die out of hunger. And most of you who are privileged uh, with a lot in your life, you might not be able to understand and gaze the scenario of what's happening, uh, uh, what's happening on the actual front. And this is something I wanted to bring you notice to. Now imagine there is a faulty public distribution system and there is malnutrition. And on top of it, our greenhouse gas emission is very high and this is leading to a climate change. The climate change will effectively cause a temperature rise of 1.5 degrees centigrade uh, in 2021 and it's for sure it's happening. So apparently most of you might feel that 1.5 degree may kya hota, but let me tell you it might have a serious effect including the melting of the ice caps. If the polar ice caps melt, chances are there are many viruses, uh, uh, many bacteria, many biopathogens, which are actually in a frozen and contained condition there. The problem is, the problem is that these viruses, about which we don't know much, just like we didn't know much about the COVID virus, they might be released into the system. 
So you see chances of more and more pathogens being released into the system is only going to grow with time. So even if we have been successful in containing with COVID-19, chances are the uncles and aunties and sisters of this viruses might crop in in the coming years. And that coming year might not be very far. On top of that, there is malnutrition. So there is low resistance and immunity among people. And remember, most of you who are into the manufacturing, you will be dealing with people who are who are mostly in the BPL, below poverty limit area, or below poverty limit zone, or maybe are slightly above that. People who have very little understanding of nutrition, the balanced nutrition. They don't understand and they don't get as well. So it's a very susceptible population, which every now and then can be affected by a certain virus or a certain biomass. In a food industry, when you are operating, you have to think, how are you going to deal with such kind of a scenario where your people might always have a chance of being affected. My friend who's doing a research in Milwaukee, she sent me this uh, picture where she wanted to uh, show me, just checking, uh, Suman, am I audible, no? Everything is clear, no? Absolutely, Suman? absolutely Suman. clear. Super, thank you, just a second. Uh, uh, just a request. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So uh, this is a picture that my uh, friend sent me from uh, Milwaukee. She's doing a research. She's a virologist. So she's just uh, put it out very simply in this picture. And if you can see, there are three probable chances which are going to happen now. One is infected people not detected, not immunized, and spreading it. That's exactly what's happening now in the first part of the picture. In the second part of the picture, you see some people can be given uh, this. Uh, immunity trials, of course, which are happening. If they are given the immunity and some are infected, again, chances are, again, chances are people who are not immunized can be infected very badly. Now, this is the scenario that is going to happen in the next uh, two to three months or maybe a little more than that in India, provided, provided there is some relief coming from somewhere of the world or maybe in India as well uh, regarding the vaccination. Now, and the best scenario that can happen is that many people are immunized and these people are, are let free and uh, there is something called a herd immunity. So the immunity develops among the population automatically. This will, will be something that we should look at probably end of this year or maybe beginning of early next year, chances are. As I said that uh, there are a lot of predictions which are failing because uh, and, and it's changing every day. Because the kind of viruses that we are dealing with, especially the SARS uh, type of viruses and H1N1 type, HN type of viruses, the problem is the genetic material continuously transmutates. So as a result of which, it is very difficult. It's, it's like a Meghna. You know, you have a Meghna in Ramayana. Now that you are seeing a lot of Ramayana, I, I, I love mythology. As most of you who are with me on my Facebook already know it. Uh, there's a lot I keep writing about Indian mythology. And there you see there was a character, Ravana's son, who's called Meghnath. And he would continuously keep changing himself. So it is very difficult to basically uh, kill him. And therefore, he was known as Indrajit. Now, uh, going back to the real life again from here. And if I'm to give you an understanding, like what I said, that uh, climate change and infectious disease, and if you think that, uh, come on, Didi, this is only a hypothesis, it might not be. Because if you look at this kind of pictures, which are there with me, it will tell you the hotspots of the climate change, which has been predicted in India, is exactly more or less overlying with the hotspots of the uh, hotspots of the COVID-19 attack. Yeah, did I, did, I, did I get locked out? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So let me just start sharing again.
sorry, sorry. I got I, I got uh, locked up. It's my son who's calling from the other room. <laughs> this is the problem. I mean, you have uh, webinars from home. Uh, yeah. So coming back quickly. So this is again something which I had drawn uh, talking about the public distribution system that there is a lot of money, a lot of wealth being put into the system. But how much of it is actually reaching to the poor and how much of it is drained, uh, being drained down by corruption? So as a scientist, uh, if I am to look at this scenario, it is really, com it is really uh, uh, complicated. And if I tell you that you can probably solve it by uh, just a bit of personal hygiene, uh, well, uh, uh, it is not the right thing that I can I mean, I cannot support that kind of thing. However, however, there are two things that you must understand. You can either do away with the risk completely, which in this current scenario, well, I am not very hopeful, but definitely you can mitigate or bring down the risk. So in order to bring down the risk, if you look at this picture, FSSI talks about the five rules of personal hygiene, where you have hand wash, you have alcohol-based sanitizers, good respiratory uh, hygiene, which is wearing mask, frequent cleaning disinfection, no close contact. Now, uh, apparently on paper, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. But on grounds, in factories, look, I'm a baker, okay? I, I, I used to run biscuit factories, biscuit productions, uh, matter of fact. And uh, I can tell you when we are into the, so I can tell you uh, that, uh, sorry, one second, yeah. So I can tell you that, uh, if you look at the biscuit industry, especially near the oven, where the baking of the biscuits happen, I think even on a winter day, the temperature would be somewhere around 35 to 41. So you can imagine what kind of heat is there in the, the other months, especially in a country like India. Now the challenge is the mask that we are talking about. Just by simply putting on a mask, will it help? Because most of the time I'm seeing the scenario is something like this. You can see uh, this is a part with a small gate. The rest of the sides are open. And I don't know why, what is that gate doing in the middle of the park? So the face mask is also like that if it is not supported with the other personal hygiene tips. Now, when you talk about this personal hygiene uh, practices to your workers, how many times do you think they will not touch the front of their uh, mouthpiece? How many times and how will you set up the frequency of hand sanitizer? What will be the hand wash frequency? What will be, when you talk about frequent cleaning and disinfection, what will it be? These are all remaining to be seen. And uh, this is something which we'll have to see uh, factory-wise, situation-wise and location-wise. And that is where the role of food technologists and uh, microbiologists will become very, very important in food industry. Because you understand, whatever we have been doing so far in most of the companies, uh, no offense, men, please understand that 25% uh, of the Indian food industry is organized. And uh, almost 75% and more than that is unorganized. So in the unorganized sector, which is trying very hard to make both and means meet, there is a lot of production pressure. Under high pressure circumstances, under high pressure circumstances, uh, how, how, uh, we are going to uh, really put this out, this remains to be seen. For example, for example, if I can say, there is a myth. Uh, there are many people who have this myth here. When you say that, uh, is COVID-19 transmitted by, uh, transmitted from food? So the answer as of now is no. It is not transmitted by food. But please understand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as of now, it says no. But you never know what's going to come up next, number one. And if you go, if you try to understand the virus, how does a virus replicate? A virus can only replicate in a living host. So basically what happens, it will use surfaces just to get itself transmitted. It will remain in a dormant form. The moment you touch those surfaces, it comes on your hands and then you touch your mouth, nose and other cavities in your body. And you are actually inviting it into your system. And that is one of the reasons why epidemiologists have, uh, have, have seen you in your houses because they believe that the more you go out the more exposure you have uh, these are reflex actions of your brain by uh, touching your mouth eyes and ears and nose this you cannot stop so the susceptibility is going to increase however 
It also mentions, if you look at this line here, the responsibility of the FBO to follow good manufacturing practices, good hygiene practices, as prescribed by Schedule 4 of FSS. For those of you in this call whom I have trained for food safety, I mean, the post training that I have given you, or some of you I might not have given you, if you remember, I have been talking about this in the first half of my training where I told you about the different requirements and most importantly, the challenges. Now, with COVID-19, this challenge is only going to get more. And this is where, again, the training will become very, very important. The other thing, the other thing that you might face a challenge is understanding. Uh, okay, I need one second to go back. Okay, so uh, the thing is, uh, here I'm talking about the different surfaces and uh, based on which, and based on which you can uh, have your, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the, 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 the survivability, the survivability of the virus on the different surfaces. As I said that this is a PPT that I will give to all of you after the training, so don't worry about it. I've just picked up the important slides from here, just to give you an understanding. Now, even if you look here, it is very difficult. It is very difficult to tell you. Uh, hello. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, I'm audible. And you, can you see the screen? Screen is okay? Yeah, yeah. Super. Uh, uh, Irene, I'll just a small request video. from uh, Irene. Yeah, the video. video could you please, could you please uh, appear in the screen so that uh, a I'll snapshot I'll can be it. taken for the I'll meeting? Sure, sure, sure. I'll just do that. One second. Yeah, thank you. There you Take a good one huh? with my with my India flag. Huh? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, Let me get back. Yeah. Okay. So screen share. Yes. So I was here talking about the surfaces. Now, if you look at the food packaging surfaces, uh, you won't be able to say, and in fact, no scientist in the world can tell you that how many days the virus has been there on the surface. So don't take a risk. What they are saying is you should be able to uh, sanitize and clean it properly. Now, again, when it comes to the sanitizer, you see QMBA, uh, uh, the one that we regularly use is uh, isopropyl alcohol, and then uh, chlorine, and then sodium hypochlorite, I guess that's also, also been suggested by FSSI and all the other health ministry as well. But uh, since most of the food manufacturing units do not have, do not have, mind you, most of the food manufacturing units do not have their own microbiology laboratory. So this might be a time when you can think, you can talk to your management, and if you are the management, then it is very important for you to realize that uh, going ahead, uh, microbial laboratory in-house can be very, very important because you need a feedback about the scenario of the developing pathogens in the factories. Even most of the factories where I audit, I've seen uh, microbiologists uh, trying their best, trying to do a good job, but end of the day, there is not much of support from the management. So as a result of this, most of the data are usually uh, framed and they're just put out for the sake of it. So, uh, that is something which is not going to help. So if I can summarize what needs to be, what needs to be done in this scenario. And as I said that I'm not going to getting into the clutter of the slides because it will get monotonous if I go on reading from there. I'll send it to you, it is all there, but I'll explain this in this one slide. So first we have to think about advanced sanitizers. So one of the uh, things that we are talking about is the use of a COVID tunnel. So basically every factory, big or small, have to use a COVID tunnel. Now the challenge is that if I have to use a COVID tunnel uh, and there is a spraying mechanism, 
uh, we need to understand. So far, whatever uh, reports have come to me regarding the COVID channel, they are not very exciting and they are not very uh, appreciating us because I find that there is a lot of flaws which is there. Also, uh, the idea of passing through a COVID tunnel is you will go through a spray. Now, if you are not wearing a PPE and if you are moving through that tunnel, then what happens? Second, if you are wearing a PPE, now, uh, is, it, is, it a, is it a proper PPE that you are wearing or is it a half PPE? Like say, for example, if you look at the ones that the doctors and nurses are supposed to use, are those the ones that you are going to give it to your uh, factory people? And do you think that they will be able to maintain that? If not, if not, just by making them pass through the COVID tunnel is not going to help. Because the infection cannot be controlled uh, directly by that. So I've written in the second point, if you see here, it is true use of PPE. Now this is something interesting. Most of the audits that I do, the day of audit when I go, I find people wearing aprons, their caps are in place. Caps are not in place sometimes. I mean. Even the way they wear the caps is not right. So this is again very interesting. You're using a PPE, but you don't know exactly how to use it. Like say, for example, most of the time when, uh, you know, I'm giving a lot of lecture, but when I go to the market, uh, putting the mask on becomes uh, so humid for me that I keep it, uh, basically put it below my chin. So that doesn't make any sense. It's just for the sake of wearing it. So how in, how in manufacturing systems in India, in a tropical country like India, where the temperatures are very high, how is it that people are going to wear all this for such a long time? And if they don't wear, what is the purpose of the COVID tunnel? And if you look at the next point, it says that real hand wash and no eye wash. Most of the factories that I audit, if I tell you that when I go to the factory, I see that uh, if there are 100 workers, there is one tap or two tap. Uh, there is hardly any disinfectant. A hand wash is there, but it's like one or two counters and there is no hand dryer. The tap that most of the company uses, they are hand, hand operated uh, uh, taps. So these are something uh, which are people like me, I've been into the food safety part talking to people across the industry over the last 15, 16 years. And I've been honestly, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I, 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 I am like a little disappointed also because they think I'm mad. I go on talking about this huh? and uh, they think I'm just blabbering it in the, in the training that I go and give them. But now everybody will understand the importance of this because if an auditor goes and finds out that you are having one tap or uh, probably two tap for every 50 or 100 people, you are actually doing an eye wash. You are not doing a hand wash. Proper hand wash regime is not being followed. And most of you, I can see some of my young students are also here who are auditors. Uh, please don't compromise with the standard under any kind of pressure. If you go to any factory for auditing, please raise these points with them. And don't say, ha, thik, sir, hai, baad mein kar Earlier, probably we might have compromised in certain aspects sometimes, but now giving them this benefit of doubt uh, is not good. And I would request all my industry members as well not to get into such kind of practices. Please do what needs to be done. You know why? Because what is most important, gentlemen, is this. The trust. Because I can assure you, uh, many companies, many uh, international, sorry, the, the, the larger giants, they're going to come up with advertisements where definitely they're going to talk about post-COVID, what are the measures they have taken? And why is it uh, important or why is it safe to have their phone? Because the problem is, uh, you know, because if people lose trust in your brand, if people lose trust in your brand once, uh, there's very little chance that they're going to come back. And people will be very, very skeptical now. Even though the supply demand gap in India is huge, there is a scope for a lot of players, new players will be coming in. But for the existing players also to make a mark, especially for companies who are serving, uh, your, uh, uh, you know, some kind of savouries and pastries, the biggest challenge will be because people will always be looking at you with suspicion. Even if they eat, they will be asking you many questions, especially regarding your tray management. And people who are from the bakery, who they know what I'm talking about. Similarly for fruit juices, when you are packing and these juices are being sold out and they would open and they would drink it directly. 
uh, people will definitely be very, very skeptical about packaged food now. And please understand, this was the industry that India was looking at in food, and this was what giving us economy. But now, under these circumstances, if we are not taking care, uh, then we are screwed up big time. So this is my request to uh, the industry people, as well as to uh, technicians and the technologists who are working in the industry. Please work very closely on this. All body sanitizing is something I've already discussed. I told you what are the challenges. So this again, company to company, this needs to be fixed. This, the second last one is about the awareness and alertness. Now this is very interesting, gentlemen. Uh, like yesterday I was doing this session for uh, JDSTA, which was the tea association of India. And we know that the tea segment in India is very, very challenged because a lot of people are there who are, uh, you understand the kind of labor that we deal with within tea. Uh, academic level is very low. And especially uh, those companies which have a night production, uh, things get even more difficult there because monitoring is almost uh, not there. So during the implementation of trusty or sustainable, uh, you know, uh, sustainable uh, certifications like RA and all, I've been always, me and my team, we have been always talking about, please build up awareness, please make the supervisors responsible, you know, train them up, let them talk, and let them oversee things, give them a simple checklist, and guess what, it is always there. And it is always going to be there, but it is your involvement which becomes very important. If you feel that uh, that's, that's all right. If you have that kind of a casual attitude, it's not going to work out. So an extra effort needs to be put in. For most of my people, for most of uh, the people here who are uh, either from a consulting background or, uh, you know, or, or food technologists or technologists who are handling the food safety management system in their company, uh, we have always dealt with HASA. Most of you know this, this is a hazard analysis where unintentional uh, uh, hazards were something which we have been considering. But now you see the latest version of the FSSC and the other upgraded standards of CASAP and BASAP, which had already started talking about the biopathogens coming in. And therefore, the risk analysis, which you are expected to do now, even as per the schedule of course, they are going to make some changes in that. And you see, they are going to put in a column where they are going to talk about how you are dealing with biopathogens in your company. So this is something which you will have to add in your risk analysis. And without this, uh, probably uh, it's not going to be approved. So, and on the top, you see I've written uh, uh, repeat monitoring. So actually I wanted to draw a crying corona. I don't know why this corona is laughing. Probably because he understands that uh, it will be very difficult to get all these things in place. So it's still laughing. So we have to make it cry and we have to basically kill it by doing a repeat monitoring. And this is where the role of technologists and especially uh, most of you, uh, like all of you who are getting certified today from FSSAIE as your COVID warriors, uh, you have a lot to do in your own field, in your own factory, in your own locality. Uh, because you understand that there is a lot of negative propaganda and false propaganda and unscientific propaganda which is coming. So we have to also stop the spread of the fake news because you see it is killing people and it is taking their lives. So uh, just to tell you that FSSI is always there with you. If there is any problem, you can definitely refer to us. And I am your, uh, you know, I am definitely somebody whom all of you know. You can always talk to me, you can write to me, I can send it to the right people across. If you're hesitating to put it up, it's up to you. But uh, FSSI is there to support you and we are helping you fight these uh, issues. And we are also open for understanding your problems and if you think any ways we can uh, influence you or help you uh, by more trainings for that. Indian Chamber is always there, we can conduct trainings together. You can bring more people uh, live and then we can have more seminars later on, sorry, uh, more sessions later on, where we can actually discuss about Schedule 4 and the spread of our controlling of such biopathogens. In the end, uh, just one more thing that uh, I need to show you all, and this is something called the community food system. Why? Because this is the other aspect which is affecting the Indian society now. And this is something which I, I, I always hate and I don't like people who do this. Uh, showing off, uh, you, you might uh, help people, but uh, please understand they are also they also have a self-respect. So if you are going to take photos with them, put it out, and then people look, these are people in distress, and I don't like them. Chances are, uh, 
you are not doing any good to their mental health. And remember, uh, maybe someday I'll get a chance to talk to you on how your mental health and your uh, physical health is related and how infectious disease plays a role over there as well. So what's coming up next in order to deal with such scenarios? You see, community food system will become very important. So we can have a separate seminar. Maybe Irene can bring you all together and that day I can talk to you about the future of food. In terms of the community food system, which has already started and which has already people have started practicing in some countries as to how to make the food safe and sustainable and food security is to be established in a country. But if this does not happen, please understand we have lost, I think, uh, somewhere around a thousand lives to Corona. But I can uh, surely tell you, of course, there is no data. But uh, And these are uh, kind of data which you usually officially won't get. But I can tell you many thousands have uh... Yeah, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, Suman, thank you. There was a call actually. So in a country like India, this always remains a challenge. So in a nutshell, if I to summarize, uh, uh, this is me, and uh, you can all stay connected with me. Those of you who are already there, and those of you who are not there, you can always connect with me on Facebook, uh, where I keep on sharing uh, the updates uh, on different scientific uh, aspects that I'm dealing with, and uh, the different updates which I keep coming in FSSI also, I keep putting it here. It's a good me medium to communicate, and it's a good thing to be friends also, so we can all stay in touch. And together we can build up this awareness very strongly because uh, in the coming times, again, uh, just by uh, doing these few steps, as I told you, might only reduce the risk, but it is not going to eliminate the problem. So uh, Shuman and Irene, uh, that's mostly from my side. So if you can have the questions, then I can answer. Yeah. Yes, uh, there are a few questions. Uh, Please go ahead. Mr. Mrs. Prachi Patel says that uh, which disinfectant is based for sanitation uh, bath at entry of the industries? Uh, which uh, which is best? Disinfectant. So uh, yeah, so this is something which I told you, ma'am, that uh, uh, there has been uh, there has been a few nominations by FSSA. You will find that in the in the PPT that I will be sending you, or Irene will be sharing with you. But the problem is that company to company and place to place, there might be a variation. Uh, why? Because chances are, chances are the kind of biopathogens that you are dealing with in your locality, in your area, the intensity, the climatic conditions. And for that, it is very important that you have some kind of a microbiology test done. So it's a kind of a verification and validation study that you, uh, that you must do, that you can do. I won't say you must do, you can do, uh, which will help you understand the effectivity and to find out which one is the best. Otherwise, it's very difficult to say from here which one is the best. It, it will vary. It will vary on the usage and the people. Yes. Yes, Shubham. Yeah. Uh, second one uh, requests uh, that if you can share uh, chemical names used to spray in COVID tunnel, if you can share those names, chemical names. Okay, so as of now, the sodium hypochlorite is something which they are saying, and uh, I have honestly not seen any other uh, chemicals being suggested. But uh, there is a flyer which has, which I will provide again. They have mentioned some names over there along with their commercial names. You might uh, try them out. But uh, regarding the COVID tunnels, I would suggest everybody that uh, don't be in a hurry. Uh, talk to people who are uh, dealing in this, uh, who are uh, manufacturing or probably procuring this. That can be one. Yeah, so uh, that's right. Sodium hypo and IPA. So IPA is not bad. IPA is not bad, but spraying it in the COVID tunnel, yes. And if you see, uh, most of the time regarding hypo or IPA, the other problem which is happening is uh, it's, it's getting a little dynamic also. Because uh, in some places, we have been using it, and some places where they have prescribed some of the chemicals that is also not available. 
So you can check out from that list uh, whatever is available and whatever is not banned or whatever will not be banned. You know, quickly, and you can use that. Yeah. So IPA is banned in Tanzania. That's for sure. Ronald, I got your message. Yeah, that's true. It's banned because IPA you cannot use, and uh, alcohol is something which you cannot use for spray. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Uh, there is a new question Next. in the question panel uh, from yeah. Gautam Chauhan. It says. Okay. Now they, we are listening that COVID-19 can be entered in our body through bare eyes or yeah. also. How yes. true it is, please explain and how can we prevent it uh, in personal as well as in professional life? Uh, since I'm, uh, honestly speaking, as I said that uh, uh, viruses are there. Viruses are, are always there around us. They are ubiquitous, just like fungus. The problem is the problem is that uh, you know the moment. It's not that that we have to go out of our house to get the infection, but the problem is that it might be there even in the place where you are staying. You don't know. Maybe in a very low intensity, so it is not affecting. What we are suggesting, or what, in fact, not we, in fact, what the global medical fraternity is suggesting is the repeated hand wash, eye wash, and, uh, you know, time to time, uh, washing your face and eyes is by putting in water. But if you personally ask me, uh, it is difficult to say that uh, even after doing all this, the virus will not get into you. So the only thing that you can do, according to me, again, as I said, is to work on your nutrition. Because chances are, if you are uh, if you are having good nutritive food, and good nutritive food also uh, will involve. Now, if you ask me, like say for example, yesterday somebody asked that, okay, there is a say, uh, there is a finding that tea of flavin from tea, tea of flavin from tea has a very strong impact on uh, has a very strong impact on uh, the corona, and some university has reported that. So, is drinking a lot of tea going to help? No. There is no direct correlation between that because the pathway in which the virus operates in your system and the pathway in which your uh, uh, these uh, active principles they work in your system might or might not match. This also needs to be seen in the coming days. So as of now, what I can say, the generic procedures which they are saying, uh, yeah. So the generic uh, thing that they are saying now. Uh, is to do the hygienic practices, and I think for the time this is what you can. But you cannot uh, eliminate the risk. Just stay healthy and eat good food. Good food. Yeah. Yeah. So much. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pritha Majumdar uh, shared a concern that uh, yeah. good sanitizers are not available in market. What are Absolutely. the alternatives? No alternative, sir. No alternative. I'm sorry. There is no alternative because uh, the role of a sanitizer, if you understand, it's very simple. It, it, it just, uh, you know, soaps and sanitizers are there to uh, work on the structure of the outer structure of the virus and to disrupt it so that the genetic material comes out and the virus is there. So, in when you don't have good uh, when you don't have good sanitizers, because most of the sanitizers that you are getting in the market, if you look at, I was looking at some of the sanitizers. Uh, they are written that it is mostly you know 70 percent uh, alcohol and, and a different combination they are not talking about but i don't know how in, uh, in in this kind of a scenario when most of the things are locked down how these things are getting validated uh, because just in the name of sanitizers you cannot use any chemicals so there must be a way there must be a way but i i am not aware other than uh, uh, good sanitizers how you can handle this is very difficult to say it's probably the same old things that we have been using we'll have to Soap and uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next so, is uh, from uh, Devarati De. It's a little technical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He uh, wants to know the percentage required uh, for sodium hypochlorite uh, for spraying in yeah. tunnel. What is the percentage? Uh, somebody in the audience only raised this question that there is a bank. Uh, I think uh, the, from the ministry only they said that hypochlorite could not be sodium hypochlorite could not be spread. So what I'll do the first is I'll just uh, talk to the ministry again, maybe today or by tomorrow morning, and I'll just try to find out uh, how far they have relaxed. If there is any relaxation or if there any other suggestion that they have made. Okay. okay. So I don't want to uh, say something wrong. I will find out and uh, if 
uh, you can all, as I said, that I've shared my number is retiring. You can take my number, you can ping me. And uh, we are, of course, connecting on Facebook. So you can always write to me and I can get back to you. But I'll check this for sure. Yeah, thank you. Next. Next is uh, from Pushpita Sina. It says, yeah. what solution uh, should food processing unit who, uh, I think it should be outsource manufacturing and packaging of food uh, considered during the time? Well, first of all, uh, if you look at uh, some of the slides in the PPT that I'll be sending you, they're talking about the social distancing. And they're also talking about minimizing, uh, if I'm not wrong, they are, she's mostly asking about uh, the Zomato kind of a setup, is it? Uh, where uh, Zomato or maybe, you know, this uh, Shuman? Yeah, is, the, it? is this not about that? Saying uh, what solution should food processing unit uh, who outsource manufacturing and packaging. Uh, so if so, it is a kitchen, the handling mechanism will be different. Yeah, yeah. So if, it is, uh, if it is branding, yeah, if it is branding, then again, the general rules of manufacturing will uh, will bring it. Now, if you see, uh, most of the, the challenge with us who are in food industry, the challenge with us is uh, most of our processes involve multiple locations and multiple handlings. Like say one of the uh, prescriptions that has been given is a distance of one meter between two layers or between two walks between in a factory. So imagine uh, if it is a small uh, kitchen, how is it possible that we have one meter distance between uh, uh, the people who are operating? So the challenge is there and again as I said, some of these things have to be empirically checked first. So once the lockdown opens, we mustn't be saying Kuch nahi hone wala hai. that is also we should not be saying again at the same time we should not be accepting the things that are given to us because many of these we'll have to try and test in our uh, in our system and we'll have to see how how they are operating because there is one challenge as i told you if you think that covid 19 is the end of it it's not so there are uh, chances that we can be facing similar biopathogen challenges in the coming times so this is a wake up call for you to get ready to get your system in so, unfortunately, you know, uh, I feel bad to say this, but it is more like the survival of the fittest. Those of us who can survive uh, these challenges uh, will be able to see through. But today also, uh, the other thing that I'm seeing is with the home deliveries. There is very little control that FSCI or the government have over home delivery systems. People who provide food uh, uh, in their locality by making food at their home. So there is very little uh, quality control there. Uh, people are mostly having it on trust. So these are all vulnerable yeah. systems and uh, we need to be very careful. Again, practicing the general hygiene is all I can say as of now. But again, these things will be looked into, I can assure you, because already people have been talking about this, the vulnerability of this situation. Yeah, thanks, Shuma. Yeah, next is uh, Mr. Minmoy Sinaroy. He yeah. He's asking that uh, if, some chemical agent is available to sanitize the vegetables which are coming from the market. Is it available? Sorry, sorry, Suman, I just got, uh, there was a call. Yeah, okay, uh, uh, I'm repeating. Uh, yeah. Is there any chemical agent uh, available in the market uh, for sanitizing the vegetables? Can you hear me, uh, Dr. Dev? One second. Sorry, sorry. sorry. This, this is coming. Uh, regarding the vegetable sanitization, uh, there has been a prescription of three to four chemicals minimum. Okay. But again, as I said, that uh, these are prescribed. Okay. So if you ask me, doctor, is it really effective or no? That again, only time will tell. I'm not sure what kind of a setup you operate out of. If it is a kitchen, and uh, if it is not a very big kitchen that you have like these people in uh, your wow momo and all this kind of people or these people having the cloud kitchens but at least they have a very uh, they have a moderately big setup and a, uh, and a process by which they can test their products uh, it's very difficult to say which one will be the most effective you know 
So you can always go by the predictions that FSSI has put it out. You can try them and then you can do some tests, microbiological tests. But again, uh, most of the tests which happens in microbiology, they are unfortunately on bacteria and fungus. There is very little on virus. So this is again something which I've been talking in terms uh, to some of the laboratory people, heads I know, if they can come out with a cost effect. Because most of the time the virus uh, kits, testing kits which are available even in food products uh, is very rare and they are very costly. So it's not possible for small manufacturing units like us to afford uh, those kind of testing systems. But uh, I'll definitely get back to you on the vegetable part, maybe with the top two or three names which has been so far suggested. Okay. Yeah. Next. Uh, next is uh, asking whether COVID tunnel is advisable or not. Well, if you ask me, uh, I have told my clients for them to think and come back to me because uh, it is an investment definitely if you are buying the whole stuff and if you are not buying, if you are making it yourself, then again, there is a question mark on the effectivity of that. And uh, somebody pointed out regarding hypo, this is again uh, uh, very, very uh, interesting that if sodium hypochlorite cannot be sprayed. Uh, in a COVID tunnel, then what are the alternatives that can be spread? That also needs to be seen. So as of now, if you ask me, these are all in the experimentation phase. So I cannot definitely point finger and say, yes, it is effective or no, it is not effective. Because again, I'll have to find a way in which virus can be tested or effectivity against biopathogens can be tested. Yeah. So Irene is saying we need to close. So maybe one last question, Shuman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, uh... <laughs> Little delicate. Uh, yeah, Devarti Dey is asking whether uh, the virus actually flows in the air or not, uh, so that wearing gloves and cap would be helpful uh, to prevent the infection or not. Devarti, there is, this, uh, there is a video of uh, our uh, Miss India, uh, Miss World, what was it? Priyanka Chopra, asking the same question to the World Health Organization's uh, deputy director or director on this. Uh, have a look at that video. You search it out on the net, you will get it. Uh, see, the problem is I'm a doctor, but I'm a person uh, who, who, who is now only depending on his secondary research because I've yeah. not been able to operate my lab or I'm not able to go to my lab post a lockdown. Yeah. So most of the things which I'm saying is basically I'm reading from my colleagues who are sending me the data from the different universities across the world or whatever I'm getting from my Indian counterparts in this country who are still able to you know maintain their operations. From there... Uh, there is very little chance. Uh, now, regarding gloves and uh, effectivity of gloves and mask, I told you. Simply by wearing a mask, simply by wearing a gloves will only mitigate the risk. It will bring down the risk. But it will not eliminate. It has to be coupled with your hand washing practices and other hygienic practices which are shown, uh, uh, which, which have been suggested again by the epidemiologist and, uh, and the biologist. But again, virus is a very, very strange creature. It's a very strange organism, and most microbiologists will agree with me. Uh, it's, it's not easy to contain a virus. Yeah. Suman, thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dr. Dey. Uh... So before we conclude, Suman, I'd just like to read out a few lines, okay? And then you yeah, can please. conclude this. Please. So this is uh, from Gulzar Sahib, and Gulzar Sahib said something very nice, which I wanted to share with all of you. He said that बहुत मीठी है खूबसूरत है ज़मीन बहुत मीठी है खूबसूरत है ज़मीन हम जानते हैं गुर की ढीली है गुर की ढीली है means it is like a chunk of jaggery बड़ी मौलिक हवा उतरी है इस पर बड़ी मौलिक हवा उतरी है इस पर इसे घुन न लगे इसे घुन न लगे हटकर जरा देर ठहरो हटकर जरा देर ठहरो और धूप आने दो उठेगा आफताब आफताब इस साथ उठेगा आफताब छाने का किरणों से इस मौलिक हाव को इस मौलिक हाव को मकोरों की तरह मकोरों की तरह ना भीर करना मकोरों की तरह ना भीर करना अलग हो के खड़े हो जाओ अलग होके खड़े हो जाओ धूप आने इन अ नटशेल ही इज ओनली आस्किंग अस टू रिस्पेक्ट द द लॉकडाउन नॉर्म्स एंड प्लीज डू दैट जेंटलमैन आई कैन टेल यू व्हाट एल्स यू मोर 
uh, nobody has all the right answers for covid 19 if they say that i know everything about covid 19 it's not true and uh, the world is going to change even more in the next two three years be careful thank you thank you so much thank yeah. you dr the thanks thanks a lot and those who uh, want to ask questions otherwise also you can connect with me take my number from iri and you can connect with me. just say who you are and from where you are calling that's it i'll call you back okay thanks a lot thanks a lot Great for session. thanks a lot thanks. for sharing thanks thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you so much god bless you take care bye thanks